So we're going to demo how to do the fancy, fluffy, scallopy Dutch braids here on Guinness. So to start, I talk a little bit about what you need. Um, a pair of scissors. You need a needle, a big needle with a large opening so you can get yarn in it and it can be super blunt. Um, knitting needles work really well or the standard needle that comes in your $5 braiding kit. Super awesome. Um, clips to keep the hair out of the way are very useful. A comb is very useful. And I use quick braid. You could mix hairspray and water together. You could just use water. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, for the mane, you want to keep it kind of long. The thicker the mane, the shorter it can be. Uh, his mane is like medium thickness. I don't pull it. So um, I try and keep it about hand width or hand length long. It's a little bit long right now, but it's working fine. Um, this is great for people who are super lazy and don't like to care for their manes. Uh, you can also cut it straight across and it will work just fine. So <laughs> if you're extremely lazy, it is great. So to do a braid, you want to take a large chunk of mane. The goal is to kind of do as few braids as possible. So I tend to, in the thicker parts, do one comb width, but for the thinner parts, I'll do a little bit more. So you can see this was a thinner part of mane. I did like a comb and a quarter. This is a little bit thicker, but I'm gonna do maybe just a little bit over a comb width. Practice, if you do too many, it looks fine. If you do fewer, it looks fine. Take a deep breath, it's not brain surgery. So then you get a little bit of quick braid. And you're gonna focus that wetness up at the top. Um, he has a lot of summer growth coming in, so his mane is very wispy right now, which makes it a little bit harder to control. That will go away as the summer and everything grows in. So you separate your hair out to braid it into three strands, and you want to do this so it's pointing straight up. Um, and then you're gonna do about two to three braids straight up and then kind of loose and then you can turn the braid down oh, try not to lose all your hair pieces um, turn the braid down and braid down and here is where you're gonna braid in your yarn so you need yarn I do a reasonably long piece because I hate running out uh, I get this at Walmart. It is cheap yarn that sort of matches my horse. I've used chestnut on a black horse and you can't really see it, so whatever. Um, you want to stop your braid when you're like this. So your outside piece is about to cross over your middle piece. And then you take the yarn and you put it over these two so that you can hold it in your hand and then you just braid it in. That is the biggest key to braiding in yarn, because if you don't do it that way, you will lose control of your yarn, and it will be very frustrating, and you will wonder why anyone braids with yarn and hate yourself. So when you get down to the end, pull the yarn away from the hair, flip it over, and just tie it in a knot, like so, at the end of the braid, tight as you can. Then you're gonna take the end of the yarn, I like to cut it so it's even. This is why I like to have a lot. And then I wet it so I can stick it in the needle. Go through the needle. Okay. Now we're going to stitch it in. So you start by pulling up the braid and you just stitch this right through the middle. The neck ends like here, so I put it right above the end of the neck. And then pull two. Be careful not to pull this through the back. You just want to pull it till it kind of stops. You're going to take the needle out and separate your yarn and you're just going to tie a simple knot to hold that underneath and kind of hold all the hair together. It doesn't matter if it's tight, it doesn't matter if it kind of falls down, not a big deal. Okay, you're going to put the yarn back through the needle together again. 
And then you're going to take this piece and just roll it up so that it makes a button. When you have it where you like it, stitch it in. <laughs> hold, hold the yarn tight so you keep tension on it so the ball doesn't kind of go wherever. And there you go. If you have some flyaways, you can either cut them. Um, if you have a big catastrophe, you can kind of stitch it a whole bunch of times <laughs> to try and fix it. The more you stitch it, typically, the more it stands up. Um, and then I finish it by just separating the yarn again, doing one simple knot, tight. And then I take my scissors and I cut as close as I can. And I'll trim off this funny piece. And there you go. Got one done. So good luck.